All right, then, so we are just about ready to get this game number one of the HCS Grand Finals underway. Walsh, this is going to be a big one. Let's have a quick chat about it. So we got Evil Geniuses taking on Noble Black. Noble Black coming in off of a win. A little bit warmed up, I would say. But then again, this is seed number one EG we're talking about. Yeah, they were looking good towards the end of that series against Vibe. But at the same time, we're talking about the number one seed. You can't make any mistakes in no. the squad. You can't run the flag at the wrong time. You have to get the kills. You have to win all your fights. And you have to be working together this entire series. So um, I think EG is going to take this. I think that's the safe pick. But at the yep. same time, that one extra series where they got to warm up, get their game going, it's, uh, it's going to help. However, we, we did see the cracks appear in Noble Black, especially in the first two games. The first one that they lost, and then we moved to the second one where they only won by a couple of kills. Fair enough. You know, they kind of wrapped it up at the end by giving the big 5-2 to Vibe on the bomb arms. However, the cracks did appear. Do they have just what it takes? I don't know. Again, you mentioned on paper these are four of the sickest, <laughs> dirtiest, nastiest players on paper. This is Evil Geniuses. There is a reason why they are seed number one currently coming in three events in a row at the moment only dropped one game so two from online one from offline they pretty much what well, they did they give clg at gamers forgiving they give clg the big three oh and you look again <laughs> you look at the players and that that's seed number two if they're three oh in seed number two in a grand final what kind of damage can they do to seed number eight yeah you know this is this is what it's all about but again this is Halo. Anything can happen. Yeah. Anything can happen if you believe. <laughs> Very cheesy. I'm sorry. I do apologize. <laughs> well, so, yeah, we keep talking about this momentum, and it is a big deal. I mean, we looked at uh, this Noble Black squad this last series. It took them a while to get rolling, especially on those objective games. Yeah. They were down uh, one cap to zero on Shrine Flag. They were down two bombs to zero on Warlord Bomb and came back in both those game types. Uh, actually, no, they just came back in the Warlord Bomb. But point being is... They can't start off slow against EG. No, you, definitely you, not. You're not going to go to a deficit against EG. Like, let them get the first three caps from Warlord Flag and come back against that squad. Something miraculous would have to happen. And I don't think this squad right here, this Noble Black squad, is practiced up enough in order to make a big comeback against EG. So I think they have to come out, get a good lead, hold it, and see what they can do to scramble up those last flags. Make EG panic. Make them mess up. So it's going to have to be a combination of Noble Black playing perfect Halo and EG just being non top of their game. Okay, then, so as you can see it there on screen, we're going to kick things off with Warlord CTF moving on. Game number two, Shrine Slayer. Game number three is going to be a lockdown, King of the Hill. And if we need to, we will move into game number four and game number five. We're going to have Shrine, CTF, and Warlord Slayer. But for now, it's all about game number one. That it's going to be Warlord CTF. This is going to be all kinds of dangerous for Noble Black. However, if they manage to take this game number one, if God is with them and they take game number one, this is going to light a bonfire underneath Noble Black. And they're going to, again, the snowball effect may come in, rolling into game number two. We are going to be kicking things off with Snipe Down's POV. No snipers on this map, unfortunately. He's not <laughs> going to be able to do what he normally does. Again, flowing back to that disgusting two-for-one that we actually saw yeah. at Games for Giving. However, it's all about now. This is it. Here we go. Game number one. Kicking things off with Snipe Down, EG versus Noble Black. We're going to see who gets control of this first camo, see who gets the first slays, and see who can get control of the side bases and eventually get in for a pull of the flag. So again, here we go then, on board with Snipe Down. Now he gets the first strike there, grenades going in, picks up the headshot, goes for the shotgun now, pushing down. Look at this aggression, they're all over Noble Black already, going into their base. They're going to run a quick flag, finds Arcanum. There's a double kill now for Snipe Down, straight off the bat. That's three kills for him in the bag in less than 20 seconds, Walsh. And look at how efficient EG is. They get those first few slays right off the bat, and they're pulling the flag and bringing it back to their Boom. base. Goes down with the shotgun, Snipe Down. You are an absolute animal, and this is why you are one of the best players in the world right now. This is what we like to see. At the moment, the flag is almost being capped. It is there. Someone needs to just grab that and push it in. However, Noble actually fought wow. back and kept them off of it. I was very stunned. I don't exactly know what happened there, but they was, didn't get that flag. I was just about to commend EG for playing that perfect. They pushed in together as a squad, got the flag out, rotated back with it. And I was just going to say they're being very patient, not giving up deaths as they're going for it. But Noble Black answering back, getting the kills, and getting the return. Yeah, but they actually went four down. So they got the cap. And, uh, sorry, they didn't get the cap. They actually managed to go four down. Noble came back and answered back with the return. However, 
down goes APG. Uh, sorry, down goes, that was Ares. I do apologize. On board with APG now. He's looking across. Point shots on Snack down. There's a guy that is lethal though, haunting him. But he comes back and kills his old teammate there. Says, no, thank you. Don't shoot me from top mid. I'm going to take you down. Finds a guy in the base. Can he pick up another one? Yes, he can. At the moment, APG showing us why he is an animal and a monster when it comes to slaying power. Yeah, we, uh, we just saw so much back and forth there. One team going all four down. Then we saw APG answering that, getting a kill, getting over on EG's base, and almost getting the flagpole. But now we have Roy on your base, pulling the flag and being selfless and running it across the map. You never want a wild Roy in your base. He's one guy you literally just want to get to put down as quick as possible. Moving on board with his brother, jumping across. He's getting a little bit of a fight for his life as he does get taken down from underneath Platt. That was, I believe, Ares again with that sentinel beam, ripping down his shield. Move across the snap down right now. He's jumping out on one shot. Wanted the challenge. Three down at the moment for Noble Black. This flag can be moved, but it has been reset once again. Back and forth, back and forth at the yes, moment, Walsh. Just death after death as we're switching through these. Maybe a little bit of a caster's curse here. But one thing I'm noticing, every time that EG's been run this flag, they've uh, been doing a good job of getting the kills. Starting to move it out, but I do not like them moving up that ramp. I don't understand no. why you're just not going to run under Needler or go through the grenades if you run into that side. Yeah, at the moment, it's three down again for EG right now. Noble Black actually taking it to them. Credit where credit's due. They're giving yeah. them the fight of their life. They need to get that flag back and recover, which he doesn't. It is on the move again. Currently on board with Lethal right now. There's two of them bottom mid. There's actually three people down low. They're going to stop APG, but APG putting up a little bit of a fight there. Didn't manage to see it through. However, move across to Maniac right now. He goes down. That's going to be four down for Noble Black. And yeah, I was just about to give Noble Black some love because it's just, it's just such a back and forth game. Yeah. Like we're noticing death after death. I cannot find anyone who can stay alive for more than a kill or two. Well, let's see if Lunchbox can do just that. He's throwing a grenade in, doesn't get any hit markers. Grenades are coming in, he's one shot. Down he goes, let's move across to snap down right now. He's just got a comeback kill. He does have half shields though, needs to get that back, which he does. Lives again to fight another day. Can he catch a play? He thinks there's someone down in blues near. They jump up onto the health pack. That was going to be Arcanum, I do believe. He's found a spawner in the flag. That's going to be APG dropping down onto Lethal. Can Lethal see that one through? Yes, it is. There's the assist kill in the feed box right now. I like where he is, Walshy. This is what you need. Someone to take control of a plat. Pitch up a 10. Do a little bit of defense on that platform. He's going to take control of top mid right now. The flag is on the move. He's going to go down, support his teammate. Don't know if he did it. Yes, he is. There's he go. There's the one shot. Finds it. Looks across. Big double kill for Snipe down. That's what they need. Throwing grenades. Streaming against the spawners. Can we see a triple kill out of him? Shooting him. No, we can't. It wasn't enough time. However, the flag is on the move once again. He's going to run that straight across top mid. Camo is up. Will he catch it on the way by? No, he wasn't. Yes, he does. In fact, he dips in for it. Throws out the flag. He's got Camo. Camo gets burned, but the flag is on the move. Now, I like that play. Snipe down. Did everything perfectly on the side flag, like you said. Game shot. We have it lethal is. putting in the first flag. But back, that all went back to snipe down. What he did totally. right there. Eric Rona snipe down, putting shots on the side flag, pushing top center when he knew that the enemy was going to spawn at both portals, and even doing the dirty work himself. Running the flag all the way top center, tossed it flat, and let his teammate get the flag cap. Perfect. 1 0 up now, they go. But interestingly, Walshy, five minutes near enough into a game with only one flag. It's quite a slowdown. However, we see Roy throwing that flag, did a little bit of a drop there. Will he get that over the wall? Yes, he does. Somebody needs to just push that in. Will they or will we have he? All no four down for EG. Snipe down the oh. only one alive, so they were able to get that recovery. Now, that would have been it's been uh, a bit unorthodox flag running we've seen from EG here. Yep. A lot of running on the plats. Now, that is one of the most vulnerable positions. Of course, it's the most, you know, it's the fastest lag route you can take. Yep. But we're talking about a map like Warlord. If they have one person alive, no matter where they're at, they're going to be able to get an eye on top middle or your plat. Again, so we're on board with Snipe Down. Drops down, does find APG. I want to see Snipe Down take control of a plat like he did before. He managed to hold down one of the sections, hang around the plat, turns around, catches Ares. But Ares says, no, you are half shield. I'm going to finish you up. However, three down for Noble Black. Gets the beat down. I didn't see exactly who it was. Big back that was smack with the flag. Lunchbox sticking a flag into someone's back and capping it. And that's going to be 2-0 to EG right now. Now, that was just perfect. Like you were saying, Snipe Down doing a great job getting the side flags. And just out of nowhere, you see Lunchbox with uh, obviously the distraction of his teammates, just able to run that flag up, get the melee, and run it in. And Lunchbox doing exactly what Snipe Down was doing earlier. This has to be an EG talked over strategy. Yeah. That they get the side flag, you sit there, and you put cross maps. Seems like they're obviously very focused on getting someone off their flag and getting uh, kills on the enemy flag. So we're going to see what they have to do. And once again, that rotation to top center. This is what, all right, once they get someone on the enemy flag, 
they rotate to top center because what's going to happen is when you have a person on the enemy flag, they're going to spawn out at the portals. Yep. Top center, the best angle to get both those spots. And Lunchbox being a good guy in the game and at the bar, and he gets the wingman medal. Picking up the wingman. Can he pick up the double? Yes, he can. Moving up the wingman into a killing spree. Can we see the triple from Lunchbox? Guy just gets away, and his mate steals his kill. However, if he gets that, that's going to be four down again for Noble Black. Finds a spawner in the portal, but Arcane and finally shuts him down. Getting, I believe, that was seven or eight kills and a wingman right there yep. for Lunchbox. Doing some serious, serious work, putting a hard time in, but we are currently on board with Roy. He's just got camo off the spawn. Finds APG, there's one. Finds the spawners in the flag, putting some shots down. There is another guy there, however, he's going to give that Maniac he finds, giving his mate a support. There's the assist medal. Down there go, flag gets moved, picking up. Will he finish off Ares? Yes, he does. There's no mistake in Roy's BI whatsoever. He's not going to let someone get away. Will we see the invisible beat down? Yes, he does. He doesn't see the camo drop down him. Give him a big elbow to the face. Grenade kill now. Roy is just ripped down it. The Roy and Lunchbox combo just putting some serious work in on Noble Black. This EG, EG squad has found their groove. You notice how they're doing perfect rotations. Gain flag cap after flag cap. There's they're doing three. the right rotations from the flat from uh, the side plats. But more importantly, they know when they can go to top center. That is what then the most integral part of these flag caps because they'll be at top center and you notice all these noble black members run from portal to portal and you can't do much when you have that person top center just laying them shots on you but look at this giving maniac some uh, a face full of bullets while the flag is run i believe that could go in the flag is waiting there for someone to just pick it up will lunchbox see this one out no he doesn't no. he goes down but he's still there it's so close to getting but they don't Noble Black managed to actually throw him back and get the recovery. Noble APG jumps in. He takes down his old teammate, Lethal. Who are we going to move across towards? Let's move across to Roy right now. He's hunting around in the portal area. There's the flag waiting. He knows someone, but if somebody behind me runs away, doesn't survive though as he walks onto a landmine. So it's very noteworthy that when EG, they start to lose control or they don't get the cap, they still keep control of part of the map. You notice how Lethal was still on that side flag. Yep. Even though the flag was back at his base, he's able to distract long enough, do damage, even get a kill, and that's what allowing uh, what's allowing Noble Black to not get a counter cap. It's just stopping them from getting that. But as you mentioned before, at the moment, he's kind of gone into from going from no flags within five minutes to three flags within five minutes. This is the EG that we kind of want to see. That was the first five minutes. We'll yeah. give them that. That was their warm-up time. We will let them have that one. However, the slaying power right now of Loy and Lunchbox is just too much for Noble Black to counter. At the moment, they do need to at least try and get one flag to try and give them some sort of momentum moving into the six-minute remaining time right now. 3-0 to EG. Now, I want you to notice a positional difference when we're looking at these viewpoints of EG and of Noble Black. For the most part, anytime we've been seeing Noble Black members, they've been scrambling around bottom, yeah. been trying to just fight to get up top. Now we see Maniac and some of the Noble Black members finally in good position. You see he's over on uh, green side. I believe it's APG over on yellow flag. This could be their chance to get control of the map, but they have to stay in these good positions. And more importantly, do that rotation to top center when they get the chance. That yep. way they have to get the spawn kills. Exactly what you said at the moment. He's hiding in the flag, but he does have support from APG across the map. At the moment, I'm still seeing four players up across the bank yeah. for Noble Black. And all we keep seeing is death after death. For EG right now, they need to make something of this, so they need to get, rather than just keep slaying and slaying and slaying, they don't really have the time. Moving into the five minutes remaining, they've got a lot of work to do. Three caps is not an easy task in five minutes, no. Walshy. You need absolute full control, and you just notice every single time they start to get a couple slays, they're not getting all four members of EG down. They're able to rotate exactly where they need to. Exactly, and you just called it there, yep. exactly. There was one person up, they had four down, there, there was only one person remaining from EG, and he stopped the flag on his own. And they don't have this person top to punish EG every single time. Uh, EG is doing a brilliant job of flanking through. They'll port through before they get a chance to get top center and push over the enemy flag. Yep. That makes it a very uncomfortable situation for someone to push top center. They usually want to get both, you know, you want to have your side cleared out before you push top center. And uh, we have not seen a good rotation yet from Noble Black going from side flat to top center to get the, those portal kills. We've noticed uh, more so in Maniac POV where he he got a few weak over at uh, at the flag, but you notice they're at portals and they could not punish them. All right, let's move across to Lethal right now. As we're talking about Lethal earlier on, I'm, I'm a big fan of this guy and a big support. I think currently for me, definitely one of the best players at the moment in Halo 2 anniversary. Currently hiding down in at the moment, but Inez is going to come down, jumps up, does manage to survive, gets support from his teammate, takes down Arcanum. 
<laughs> you know, when you're taking down players <laughs> when you're one shot, you know that either you've got a damn good BR or you've got a damn good team behind you. Leave the shot does see what it was. Oh. He would say he has a damn good BR. Yeah, you know, you know what he's like. <laughs> this, is, this is lethal, Oliver. We'll stick with lethal off of the respawn, though. See what he yeah. does. Probably going to support his teammates as he comes out of this one. Four down, though, for Noble Black. Straight off of the respawn, then. Going to jump through the teleporter, see if he can find the nade spawners. Throws the nades up. There's another one looking for hit markers. He's got them. He knows he's hit someone's there. But his teammate, but he gets the grenade kill him. But there is landmines going off. Nuclear bombs left, right, and center. He goes down. A little bit messy in that flag right now. Moving across to Roy. He's found a guy straight off the spawn. That's not what you want. You come alive and you've got a <laughs> face full of bullets as soon as you do. He's one shot, needs to stay alive. He's got a guy right behind the wall. His mates put some shots on him. He's now going in. He's taking down. Look at that. One shot. You cannot be letting Roy walk away when he's one shot. The biggest difference I've noticed from some EG squad compared to Noble Black is off the spawn, they're just scattering. They're spreading yeah. out. Whereas, you know, Noble Black, they get this defensive panic mode. They're like, all right, we need to clear the first off our flag. We need to shoot top turn. They give away all their positions. They don't get any flags. And look at this, just like his brother. He's a great wingman. A wingman every single time. Wingman after wingman. I can't wait to see the assist and the kill their feed as we come up. Puts down another player. Moving into the two minutes, 40 seconds remaining. Three caps up for EG. All they need to do is apply the slaying pressure. We know they can do it. Down goes Roy. Let's move across to where he's right now. He's currently four shields, finding a guy in there. Throws the nades in. He knows he's one shot. Needs to be careful that he doesn't chase it, which he doesn't. But again, this is snipe down. Snipe down. Gets the assist from his teammate, shutting him down, though. But however, he's already got a guy chasing him down. You just cannot run away from this team. <laughs> Evil Genius is everywhere you go. You're getting bullet after bullet after bullet. I'm, uh, I'm interested to see the assist at the end of this game because as we saw, like two different wingmans. These, this EG squad is so confident in their teamwork and into uh, creating opportunities for their teammates that it's just being taken advantage of every single time. Uh, whereas I've noticed with Noble Black, we're seeing some individual killing sprees, some yeah. double kills, but these guys, uh, they feel like as soon as they get someone weak, they almost have to finish the kill themselves. Yeah, of course we're gonna see assists from time to time. We're gonna see, that's gonna, gonna be a natural part of this top level of play, but nowhere near the level of assists that EG has been getting. No, as I mentioned before, every time that you've always got support and this is what, this is why these guys are seed number one. It's as simple as that. The teamwork, the level of communication is next level. It doesn't matter how many kills you've got. We saw that in some of the previous games. No matter what happens, it's all about the game at hand, what's yeah. going on. So long as you've got support from your teams, then you're going to win this game, Walsh. Yeah. And I didn't want to cut you off right there, but I just noticed right again. Noble Black on complete defensive mode. When they spawn, they are not flanking out, getting to EG's base. They're just instantly spotted. You know, it's Maniac, he's already weak. He's been spotted by someone from EG and just trying to fight whatever first fight he can get. And he runs into the bulldozer known as Roy. All right, then, so we hit the 16-minute mark. That means there's going to be one minute of play left. 3-0 currently for Evil Geniuses. I think it's safe to say this could be all over in game number one for Noble Black. However, again, this is Halo. Anything can happen. But 45 seconds <laughs> remaining now. Anything it's going to be a hell of a, a triple deal. cap against EG. Oh, definitely. I'll put that asterisk right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it's just simply, it's, 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 yeah, it's just not happening, is it? Let's be honest. But again, anything could happen. Yeah, that's, it could, true. that's true. God could come down and say, right, you're going to have three caps. There we go, Sunshine, have that one. <laughs> However, finishing thing off as we hit the 30 seconds bracket on board with Lethal right now, he's just going to want to sit around. He knows that this is a win. You yeah, know, they can just chill. They don't have to force anything at this point. They just need to get a couple kills, just remain calm, and it's, uh, just taking advantage of Noble Black's mistakes at this point. Indeed. So let's have a quick chat then, Walshy. We're into the 12 seconds. That's going to be wrapping it up for EG now as they hit this game number 1 3 0. What exactly happened? Where did Noble Black go wrong against this roster in that game type? Noble Black was in panic slash passive mode. When you are uh, spawning and enemies at your base, yeah, of course it seems like you want to clear them out. However, one of the best steps to do that is to flank somebody out. You need to you need to attract attention away from your side of the map. Because you know so many times EG was able to get those spawn kills because all of Noble Black just stayed back on their side trying to finish off those one shots, trying to clear off their base. When in fact, they should have flanked at least one person out to clear that person off top center. We saw how devastating that was and how damaging it was when we saw Snipe Down or Roy push top center. But let's see if we can look at one of these stats. We'd love to see the assists and the kills that we had during this last Warlord CTF game. We saw multiple over and over again, Wingmans, and you mentioned over the brothers Wingman and each other and doing well. So let's take a look at the kills to deaths and the assists right 20 there. 20 plus assists for every single member wow. of EG. And 30 kills each above for every single one of them. That 
is why these guys are seed number one. 35, 34, 30, 39 for Roy, and then 20, 24, 24, and 23 assists. That is an incredible amount of teamwork. Now, I want to look at one of the highlights from this last game with Lunchbox. This is one of the integral parts where I'm talking about he's getting top center, getting wingman, laying down shots for his entire team, and just being a nuisance. This is where Noble Black need to flank somebody out. But instead, they just focus one after the other on the same side of the map every time. Look at this. Nobody is shooting Lunchbox because they do not have the angles. You need to have more than one angle to take down top center effectively. The guy is an absolute monster. Let's just <laughs> let's just put it out there. You know, the, every single one of these players here today, throughout all eight teams, every single player that's reached the HGS Grand Finals, they're, they're all champions, in my opinion, and they're all, they are the best eight teams in the world. It's as simple as that. However, it's all about this game currently. So moving in to game number two then, looking at that teamwork, it's scary. It's scary. Well, oh. that is so scary. To see the kills, everybody over 30 and everybody over 20 assists, that just shows you the level of teamwork in this EG roster right well, now. One of the scariest parts is that they won that game 3-0, and we both saw two or three different flags that we were like, yeah, EG could have ran that better, or maybe yeah. they shouldn't have ran a ramp, or how did they not get that cap? So even with some clutch plays on Noble Black's part as far as getting flag returns, or maybe some miscommunications on EG's part as far as not getting a flag in, they still just completely dominated that game. Now, this is the point where Noble Black needs to kind of pick their heads up a little bit, say, right, guys, let's let's do this at the end of the day. You know, I don't, there's nothing worse when a team's losing. You see the heads go down, the communication stops, things start to stall, people start to get a bit attitude with every single person on the team. You need to keep focused. Around. Okay, yeah. it's game one. It's a warm-up. That's all it was. Let's take this as a warm-up. Let's take this as, you know, we, we can still do this. You shouldn't yeah. be putting your head down after game number one. And this is what I want to see. They're going to come out of the stocks firing again. I want to see someone to, to, to light a bonfire underneath them. Again, you mentioned about them catching fire. Catch that fire, roll with the momentum, and try and take game number two. If they manage to take game number two off EG, this is going to give them so much confidence moving into game number three. Yeah, uh, they just need to put that game behind them and say, look it, we have a new game type. I believe it's Shrine Team Slayers up next. And they just need to take advantage of that. need to realize, hey, we get a good start in this, we can pull out that insurmountable lead if we get control of both snipers or get control of those rockets right off the bat. And it's like I should, said before, Shrine Team Slayers game two, Lockdown King of the Hill game three, and if necessary, we have games four and five, which are Shrine CTF and Warlord Slayer. It's quite scary to say, but I don't think we'll be seeing a Shrine CTF if EG <laughs> play the way that they did just then. However, it is all about game number two now, but... Well, let's talk about APG, that last series. Yeah. When he got sniper control, when that killing frenzy, that's one of those game-changing moments that yeah, you totally. can see, um, you know, just taking over the game and actually beating EG in the Shrine Team Slayer. He needs to do that this time around. Where, but again, the scary point of this map is that there is a sniper rifle on it. Yep. And EG have got <laughs> the man sniped down in their back pocket. Now, again, you're probably going to see a little bit of a battle between APG and Snipe Down. However, yeah. who do you want to uh, jump in with first for this next match? Me because personally, I think I, I just. You've been talking uh, about Snipe Down so much, yeah. so I think we have to jump in with him right off the bat, right? Yeah, definitely, especially right. when there is a sniper on, on the map. <laughs> I want to see some. I want to see some triple kills, overkills, exterminations, left, right, and center. But the problem is, is that. It, it becomes a common thing for this kind of guy because he can do it. Yeah. You know, he has the capabilities, he has the abilities, he has the pure, raw, natural talent to use that weapon and to end lives. Now, I'm curious as to what Noble Black is going to do because a lot of times teams will have their original starting strat where there's like, all right, this person's going to grab the snipe every single time. However, after seeing the performance of APG on that lockdown, lockdown oddball it was, uh, yeah. with the sniping performance, I wouldn't be surprised to see Noble Black give it to him right off the start because that's what you're going to need to beat this squad right now. You're going to need somebody to have Sniper, not only have it, but go off. Hit those ridiculous shots, take Snipe down right off the bat, and take over the snap. The take interesting the one about this is that twice that they've actually played Vibe, they've actually not got Rockets straight off the bat. So this will be good huh. to see if they actually get Rockets off of the bat. But here we go. It's all about this man right now. He's got the Sniper Rifle in hand. Across on the other screen, though, if we can have a quick yeah. look. Again, we mentioned there. the APG is hunting down that, Snipe I down like at that the strategy. moment. I like that strategy. So we're going to look at these two snipers, see who wins the sniper battle. But I do like this play. Give it to APG. Because when you have one of your players, one of these top players in the game that is just on fire, give that player the sniper. I don't care Without who question. it is. 
Yeah, but at the moment, they are just kind of playing a bit passively. Across on the other screen, again, they are both in their huts right now, hovering around, trying to scope each other out and find each other's feet. It's going to be an interesting one to see. I think they'll be finding each other very, very soon at the moment if we yeah. move back to APG. He's just still scoping up into ring three. Have a look, see if he can find anyone. Yeah, Rocky, so here's actually, the story on Rockets real quick. Give a quick peek yeah, over here. There we go. But we do want to stay with these snipers because we realize as soon as one of these snipers gets a pick, or especially if they pick off the opposite sniper, the game's going to be chaos. Both teams are going to be pushing for that, trying to get control of that weapon. However, we did just see APG, I think, managed to take down Roy from up on ring three, so he shut him down. That's going to be the first kill on the board for them right now at the moment as it is 3-1 in the kill feeds right now. They are leading it up, but can he hit it? I can him. Yes, he can. There's one kill now. He's found his first player. Finds APG, the but battle. it is APG who wins the battle out, taking down Snipe. Now, that's going to be a little bit of a hit for him. And we called that right off the bat. We said, yeah. hey, look, at APG has been on fire with a Snipe. Let's see what he can do to turn this game around and turn this series around. That's what we need. We need APG to actually pick this up. However, I do think on the opposite side, yes, it is as I look across the screen. Oh, beautiful headshot from APG. Catches him in midair. However, he needs to be careful. Snipe down does want to pay him some revenge. Take him down. Yolo Rocket going across the map. He does find <laughs> his target, though. Takes the player down from up on ring three. Moving down to P Street right now. APG, don't know if he actually meant to fall. Yes, he did. He meant to fall off and give Arcanum some support. Arcanum's come down. Needs to watch out for anybody he must creeping have been up. Must someone this back rock ramp. I don't yeah. know why else he would have dropped back and here. And there we go. He's I don't found think him. he would have just dropped down there from ring three. And I did like that play earlier from APG. Moving towards ring three because he only had one clip left of the sniper. Yeah. You're not going to lose an entire snipe and end up, you know, losing control Ooh, of the map. beautiful. Jeez. Killing Jesus. spree now for APG, putting the sniper rifle to work. 11-10 the score, they have taken the lead. They need to keep this up though, however, he is running low on bullets. Tell you what, let's move across to snipe down right now. Let's give him some airtime. He's got himself the sniper rifle once again. Needs to find some place to make it work, which he does. Takes down one, finds a second player, doesn't get the double kill. However, that was a beautiful headshot straight across. He just lynches people from midair. It doesn't matter if they're on the ground, in the air. No. It always finds its target with a headshot. There's the body shot. Whips out, but again, look at that assist. Was he beautiful headshot? Jumps onto ring three, but instantly gets put back down again. <laughs> Snipe down, doing exactly what he is meant to do with this weapon. Another headshot, so, left, oh. right, and center. This guy just simply doesn't miss. So one thing that was brought up to me by one of my old teammates, Shockwave, old teammates and almost rivals, I would consider, uh, Shockwave from Carbon, mentioned he, he goes, you know what's special about Snipe down? Here's one thing you're gonna notice, is that anytime he has a sniper and he has a shot where someone's, you know, not looking at him, yeah. he's gonna hit the headshot. And you never really can say that because, all right, you know, top snipers, they're gonna get that kill anyways. Yeah. But snipe down, he always just hits that headshot and just catches them off guard. And it's incredible to watch because after Shockwave told me that, I've always paid attention. You notice right there, he wasn't getting shot by that person that jumped on a snipe hut takes that extra split second and lines it up and hits the perfect headshot. Big grenade comes in. Let's move across to Lunchbox right now. He's haunting people with a shotgun. Down goes one and a killing spree right now. Killing him. spree without really yeah. a power weapon. I mean, no. shotgun is a very, very good weapon up close, but you would not consider it a power weapon with the likes of rocket launcher or sniper rifle. It just shows that he's been in great positioning working around his teammates and getting those kills. But just look at that teamwork. He found a player, and before the player even saw him, in fact, before Lunchbox even managed to get to him, he was already dead from a duo <laughs> team shot across the map. Side managed to actually see a guy off, catches him in the hook, finds Arcanum, Arcanum puts him down, though you need to get Lunchbox down as quickly as possible, but then again, you look behind. There was another player shooting him in the back, still on board with Lunchbox off the respawn, finding a guy over in the rocks. He's going to walk away and leave him. Sees the guy up on ring three, but the new combo of Doom. <laughs> Rinse hell from above and finish him off. Moving across to Arcanum. He's got himself a double kill. Can we see a triple kill? Whips it out. Yes, oh we can. My. Killjoy Avenger triple kill for Arcanum right now, taking control of ring three. This is exactly what he needs to do. They brought it back to within three kills right now, Walsh. He preemptively started to reload and realized, you know what? I can finish off this. Just yeah. one more shot. Let me get that triple kill. Now, this is so dangerous because this has been back and forth. I originally was going to give uh, EG the, you know, say they had this game just because the fact that APG was going off early on and EG still managed to hold on to the lead. But we're looking at Killing one of those even situation where there's no power weapons on the map. Arcanum, able to pull off killing trees, able to control ring three. 
and bringing his team back in this game. They're only two kills down. Just managed to grab the killing spree again, as you mentioned, exactly that. A bit of a game changer there, spinning it around to within one kill right now. They were in the lead, I believe, by six kills. On board with Maniac, has the shotgun, gets a big one to the chest. He knows he's got a player hiding behind the pillars. Doesn't have any support from his team, though, unfortunately. Goes one-on-one -on -one with Roy. Another killing spree now on the board for Noble Black. That's going to be Maniac holding down ring two with the shotgun. This is what we like to see. Two players within two minutes picking up two killing sprees. This is how you bring the game back. 29, 28 right now. But look at what's happened to Snipe Down. Look at what weapon he's got, Walsh. This could be the game changer. Here we go on board with Snipe Down. Finding a player on ring three. Didn't actually see him. 30 to 28. They're actually losing by yeah. two kills right now. This is all down to Snipe Down to bring them back into the game. Yeah, Noble Black doing exactly what they need to do. They've had three different members of the game step it up throughout Boom. this match. We've noticed. You know, APG going off, going off at the beginning with a sniper. Arcadum going off on ring three, getting that killing spree. And then Maniac getting a killing spree around ring with that shotgun and just finish off people with BR. But as you can see, they're lethal in front of him. He's got support from his team, puts one in him. No assist at the moment. They need to pick that up. Boom, another headshot. He just picks people off across map and makes it look easy. Rockets in the hands of Lethal off the side screens. That's going to be the power weapons turning over to the hands. Another headshot. Does Once this again, when people miss? are not looking at him and shooting, he hits a headshot every time. Shockwave was 100% correct when he said that strategy. But does finally get taken down. That's going to be Aries. Let's move across to him, Walsh, as he's got the sniper rifle. Finishes off. Boom, that's a headshot. Picks him up. Easy work seeing the guy on bonfire below ring one now. Looking over at the carbine. Can he see anybody in the hut? Scoping out a player. Hits the body shot. Looking for that assist medal to pop up for no one to clean it up. Bet they don't. Fine. Oh, just he's a little guy. Boom, picks off Roy. Hits the one shot. There is a grenade going in there. Will that YOLO grenade hit its mark? No, it does not. He's just hanging around rocks right now. 38 34. They have gone down on kills. EG have brought this back and extended their lead by four kills. He's only got three bullets in the chamber. He needs to hit every single one, Walsh. Yes, we've uh, we've seen every other member of Noble Black step it up so far when we've gone on their POV. It's Ares' turn. If he gets that killing spree, let's say some sort of five, five unanswered kills, his team is in the lead. So let's see what Ares can do to prove that. Noble Black belongs here in the HCS Finals, and Noble Black maybe has what it takes to take down EG. He has three bullets. If he can land every single one of them in the face, he's actually going to bring this back to a one-kill deficit on his own. However, these players are not stupid. Lunchbox knows he's there. I saw Snipe down around that corner as well. Needs to use this sniper rifle. He's going in with a sniper rifle in his back pocket. Would like to see him push back now. However, he did just cop quickly for two people on flag. Can he find one? Yes, he does. There's one. Misses the second one. There is a guy there, though. He has had shots. The lead now only reduced to three from four. He's doing the work, however, here we go. They put the bullets on the bot again, turns around, goes for the no-scope, but he does get punished and put back down. So, although he died with that sniper, he used the last bullet and yep. got the time on that weapon. So for those that are new to Shrine Team Slayer, when you drop an empty sniper rifle, it's gonna come up two minutes and 10 seconds after it's dropped empty. So that's dropped around like the 6.45 mark. That means sniper will come up at around the 4.35 mark. Rockets currently are not in play at the moment, so they're going to be back on respawn. Looking across the uh, the POVs right now, Walsh, no one's got them in their back pocket, so they're going to be on the respawn. Let's head on over to Roy right now. He's grabbed the sniper rifle. He's in their base, finding players left, right, and center. APG challenges him. Will he poke out and attempt this one? He does have half a shield. Yes, he does challenge the APG. He knows it's going to be an easy kill for him. He's got no <laughs> problems. He's going to wait and get his shields back. He's hanging around this hut right now. All they need is three more kills. This is going to be one. There it is. Whips out the sniper rifle. Let's see if he can catch anyone off guard to finish off these last two kills. Yeah, we won't be seeing any new sets of power weapons coming out this game. It's going too fast. EG's only one kill away. They can taste it. You can guarantee that they're going to try to push and finish off this game before anything else happens. Roy looking around. Can he land this last bullet to finish off the game? And there he does, Roy. Finishing off the game with a beautiful headshot on the spawner in the rocks. That's going to be EG taking game number two. Now, that was Noble Black's chance to bring back the series tied up. They have a large, large mountain in front of them to climb if they want to somehow win this series. I mean, they have Lockdown King of the Hill yeah. and two other games. I believe it was uh, Shrine CTF and Warlord Team Slayer. It's going to be a tough road ahead of them if they want to somehow bring it back against this EG squad. But let's take a look at the stats here and see who was going huge on both squads. Oh, lethal. The man, the look at that wall. He got 16 kills. He racked Plus up. Plus 8 and, and 11 assists? The assists. You kidding look me? Look at them. Lethal. We didn't We didn't actually give him much no. air time, to be fair. I do feel quite bad now. <laughs> he had rockets several times. There must have been, obviously, 
once you get them, that's why it's so important when you get yeah. the first rockets, because then you, your own team can time them. When yeah. you actually throw the rockets out, then they go onto the respawn, so the opposite team will never know when they're up, and that's why it's yeah. so vitally important on this map. Especially with Coach Towie with you behind you, timing those weapons. Coach Towie, the, the king that is of coaches. But let's take a look at one of the integral parts of the last match. Snipe down, getting control of the sniper rifle, and bringing it back for a squad when it was a nearly uh, tied game. This is this is what we want to see at this level. These kind of snipes. Just There's these one. jumping headshots just just every single time. And what he does is just every single time someone's not looking at him, he can just get these easy headshots when they're not looking at him. And he picked up that next person in rocks right after, but yeah, just snipe down, doing perfect jumping headshots getting those easy picks where he needs to and bring him the lead for his team. That's kind of what's so dangerous, especially when there are snipers in play because any of those players can pick it up and oh, use yeah. it. Oh, yeah. You know, kind of at this level anyway, every single player in the top eight needs to be able to use a sniper rifle and know how to do it. But this team, every single person is dangerous. <laughs> we mentioned this before. But snipe down the man. Every, he just don't hit. He just don't miss. He just don't miss <laughs> headshots. The, the, the one doesn't miss headshots me. when they're not looking. Of course, no. when you're getting shot at, some of those no scopes are nearly impossible to hit. But same time, he just every single time so consistent. I mean, I've done it so many times, even in matchmaking or even when I've been in tournament mode. Like someone just not looking, and I just barely miss that first shot or yeah. something like that, or I take just slightly too long to line it up. And snipe down just does it perfectly every time. I don't know how he does it. The one that got me was the quick scope into the ring three. The guy that jumped up literally <laughs> the split second that he jumped up, the bullet straight through between the eyeballs and put straight back down. That was an interesting one. But we are going to be moving into game number three. So two nil up now currently for EG. Yeah. They've got the momentum. They've got the snowball effect. Walsh. Here we go. The games are on screen. Lockdown, King of the Hill. Moving on to Shrine CTF. If. Nova Black managed to grab and actually grab a win and get them a point on the board. Again, if they grab a second one straight in conjunction, we will move on to Warlord Slayer for the fifth and final game. However, it's all about lockdown, King of the Hill. Walsh, what do Noble Black need to do on this map to put a point on the board and stop EG giving them the 3-0 whitewash? Well, I would like to see them get control of Snipe Tower before the D Hill moves over there. That's where they're going to be able to scoop up the most time. We all know that the bottom Snipe Hill is where you can get the biggest chunks of time if you have control. However, we're going to have to see how they do in the scrappy mode against, uh, against EG because EG, as we've seen before, they... Uh, when they're even in slays, they, they're very objective efficient. So we're going to see who gets that bomb center hill. And we're going to see who, after this very first rotation, after those first five hills, is ahead. Because that should be very telling about how the rest of this match is going to go. All right, then, kicking things off with Mr. Lunchbox now. He's grabbed the sword straight off of the spawn. Finds a guy bottom mid running to S1 right now. He knows the player there, putting shots across a bit of pre-fire. Grenade goes in, see if he can get a hit markers, which he does. So he knows there is a player there. I like what he did there, Walsh. I like players who will jump onto that, onto that little bracket so no one knows exactly when they're coming across. Does catch a guy though and he's Moving busted down. because he knows about those hit markers yeah. like you said before and those are oh, very telling oh and there it is maniac drops down he's gonna grab the sword quick question personal preference for you sword or shotgun on this map uh sword for sure without question definitely however there's many times when i'll go at somebody with a shotgun with that's the, sword the worst get it is the like chest. <laughs> all right so the way i look at it is i will take sword against everyone else except for shotgun so yep. it's almost like it's almost like rock paper oh. scissors sword is rock People without shotgun or paper, and shotgun is scissors. Or did I say that wrong? Oh, well. Either, Either way, way, you know how rock, paper, scissors works, and I you know indeed. what I was going for. And this is at the moment, he's <laughs> actually putting it to good use as he finds some players. Sniper rifle, interestingly, no one's actually even touched that yet. Maniac, the uh, the Ogre 1 combo currently in play. Sniper and sword looking around. He knows there's a guy coming out of library. Will he poke his head out? Yes, he does, but the shots come in, and there, of course, is the beautiful D-scope that we've seen from Halo 2 knocks him back, gets out the sword, puts down the grenade, see if anyone's going to jump out or try and get any hit markers. Yeah, he can't feel too comfortable here. I mean, you just saw how many grenades just flew in from across the map. However, this is a good situation for Noble Black. I mean, he has sniper oh, and shot. sword, has a full setup here, and he's going to be able to just keep them out of hill. I mean, although EG scrapped up 20 plus seconds, they're not going to be able to get much more until they take care of Maniac at the Sniper Tower. Indeed, this is where he needs to be, though, picking people off left, right, and center. There is a guy over there. He needs to look for the assist. No one's actually picking it up. Looking to see if he jumps top mid. Grenade goes in. Can he bounce it off the wall? Turns around. Gives him a slice. Can he get a triple? Yes, he does. Maniac triple with the sword. Nobody can touch this guy right now. That's going to give Noble Black a bit of time in the hill. Catches goes for the no scope. He knows somebody's below him. Unless I think possibly, yes, it was. Aries actually cleaned up that guy. Looking, scoping down at bottom blue right now. Beautiful place for Maniac out though, Walsh. Absolutely fantastic. It's exactly what his team needed. Unfortunately, it was a few seconds too late. I mean, we saw he got it at the very end of the B Hill. 
Had he got more time, his teammates were going to be able to get the full rest of that time on that hill because he had Snipe Tower completely under control, and his team finally got BR Tower because of that. And he so, still does at the moment. Yeah. Look at this, but he does miss the game. It does actually give him, even though we're going off Sword Spree now, though, for That's many. a rare medal. That it is, is a rare medal. You never really get to keep it for long, but there you go. Gain the lead. You heard it through the mic, guys. They are actually racking up the time. 28, 29 to 22 right now. A couple of minutes into the game. Can he hit this last? He's got two more bullets. Can we see two more headshots from Maniac? So, despite seeing a rare medal, we also see a rare greedy mode from from Noble Black. You rarely see teams try to get that top C hill yeah. because it's tough enough trying to keep VR and Snipe Tower, but also to expect to scrap up time at the top C hill when you know the D hill is where you can get most of the time. It's so tough. It is indeed. Currently still on the POV of Maniac. We are just going to try and move across to someone else. If we could jump on board with Lunchbox, please, Walls. We'll see what he's up to over there as he's actually currently sat in the hill right now, racking up that time. They need to get more time, though, because if they don't, they obviously will lose this game and it will go to game number four. However, there is a guy pushing on him from the elbow right now. Grenades are going to come in. Can he survive? No, he cannot as the D-Hill does have 31 seconds left on it. All they need to do currently, Noble Black, is sit inside there. Let's move across to back to APG right now and see where he's hanging out, Walsh. As we move to on board with APG, then he's got the loitering metal killing. He's racking up a bit of time there in that D-Hill, which is kind of what they needed. It's usually a little bit scrappy with the grenades coming in left, right, and center. However, they have managed to bring it back, and they're still the win. Sword still in the hands, though, of Noble Black. That weapon proving it's worth its weight in gold right now. Both spawning up on BR3. They need to work their way up for the next rotation, though, Walsh. Yeah, we just noticed how it went back and forth on that D-Hill, and Noble Black did come ahead. But I feel like they could have gotten so much more had they kept a full setup rather than trying to get greedy and scrap up that C hill. So we're going to see what ends up happening on this bomb hill. Because this is this, this is the hill where it's the most even. It doesn't matter if you have everyone uh, dead in the other squad, pretty much. Like, you can still scrap up time. You know it's Ares. It's going to be kill after kill. And these players are going to charge in. There's almost no bad spawns when it yeah. comes to the bomb hill. You spawn bomb blue, guess what? You can grenade right up and run right in. Uh, the pressure at the moment, though, yeah. Walsh. I'm sorry to break you off there. The no pressure problem. really is on Evil Geniuses right now. Mm -hmm. They actually went four down at one point yep. there for a second. Look at that score gap, 61 to 40. Not a great. It's only a 20-second lead. However, we do see Evil Geniuses being a little bit scrappy and trying to go for that time left, right, and center. However, back on board with Lunchbox right now. There's the double with the big grenade. Can he find the triple kill? He's looking for that. The sniper rifle did want that kill. He whipped out the shotgun. He wants to take this guy and steal his sniper. That will be a big play if he does. I do believe his teammates actually did manage to find it. Looks up, though. He doesn't actually realize the stalactites are up. It would have been nice to see him drop it down, but that doesn't matter. There's the double kill. He's got the shotgun in his back pocket. If anyone else wants to challenge him, throws it down, pushes the player back on the elbow, throws down the grenade. There is no hit marker, so he's going to be still alive and hanging around to causing problems. But there we go. You saw that. EG team shot we keep talking about Walsh. The player yeah. attempted to come up behind him and just got instantly shut down. They just know when they can turn their backs. They know when they can help each other. Lunchbox getting a killing spree, oh. you know, with just basically shotgun getting all that bomb center to hill time. And I want to point out that this, this game is only a 10-second game. However, that's also including Maniac's amazing spree where yep. he got that seven-kill spree over at Snipe Tower, controlling Sniper and Sword. So... That's not very good, in my opinion, no. for, for Noble Black. If they're only able, able to get 10-second lead off of amazing play from Maniac like that, I don't know if they're going to be able to pull at the end of this game. Yeah, it's a great shout, is that, actually? Yeah, definitely. But again, he needs to kind of do that again. But he did have the sniper and sword combo. That's a big, big thing for him. If they can get a hold of that again, and that's really what they need to do, as we are kind of in the same situation where there is up on B Hill. Plasma grenade kills him for Roy. This is he gets interesting. That one. I, yeah. I'm wondering why they're forcing over BR Tower so much, because a lot of times, you notice a lot of squads, they'll just sit over at Snipe Tower and just let them make mistakes. Yeah. They don't try to force over BR control because they realize, all right, the team that's over at Snipe Tower. But once again, moving right, back to yeah. Baniac. There we go. He's locking down that BR Tower. He's got the sword in his back pocket once again. People, they really need to get this off of him. That weapon is just doing wonders for him right now. Yeah, he's in a great situation now. Uh, I mean, they just had Snipe Tower controlled. You notice he's just kind of watching his back, and he's probably going to be able to get these last 20 seconds of this B-Hill. That is a huge, huge deal because we notice in the first half, there's really only 60 seconds scored by one of the teams. That's one-third of the time, just that one hill.
At the moment, 75 to 54. We've hit the five minutes remaining mark, guys. 75 57 right now. EG slowly scraping this back. Maniac in a beautiful position, but cannot finish the kill. Will that grenade shut down, snap down? Yes, he does. Moving across. The people do know he's there, though. They've got two of them. There they are, poking their heads out. They know exactly where he is. Will he push up onto S3 with his teammate? No, he won't. He's going down below, looking at S1. Finds the guy, whips out the sword, and look what's back in his hand there, Walsh. We're going to see if he can repeat history here and oh, get, he get shut control, down but I want to see who ended up doing that. Was that? Oh, that was going to be Roy. That is Mr. Roy. This is dangerous now. Sword and... Sniper in the hands of Roy. I believe he's actually going to give one up and give it to his teammate. There he goes. What a guy. That's what you want to be doing. He's going to say, right, See, he shares with his brother. His, his parents taught him well. They, they, <laughs> they work together along because we got we got Lunchbox right here with Sword and we got Roy with the sniper. You never know. He might have just give it because he wants his backside covering to be fair <laughs> staying alive. He but needs you do got to notice he gave him the sword. He's yeah. like, here's here's the worst toy of the two. You can have this one. I want to get some headshots. There we go, Sunshine. <laughs> Move it along. But this is where it kind of comes back now. This is where it will all change. He needs to land those headshots. Don't take them too early. Guy jumps across though aggressively, gets the no scope beat down, does trade off, gets a killing spree at the same time as well. However, he did get pushed, and it's all about this last hill. This yeah. is where they're only eight seconds behind now, Walsh. Three minutes 40 left on the clock. They need to hold this and take the lead. Jumps out, pre attempts the guy, but doesn't oh get the my. salt. That was interesting. That was also a very great route by whoever that was on Noble Black. I believe it was Arcanum. Yeah, he took down Arcanum right there. And that was brilliant because he knew, hey, he knows I'm gonna come in straight from Bomb Siren. Why don't I take a less uh, less obvious route, get away, because they must have known Lunchbox had control of the sword. Interestingly, he actually left the sword, called it out for Snap down, and he snoops in, instant, boom, there's one headshot. That was a the body right one. there, I thought. Yeah, I actually thought he actually managed to get it, but yeah. Snap down, just doing what he does best, never missing as usual, but as I said, he actually does, so I'm actually proving <laughs> him wrong there, unfortunately. Looking for another guy, misses the second one, needs to take it a little bit, he's got one more bullet, hits the body shot, can he finish off this kill, though? He needs a little bit of help, it'd be nice to see someone, but no, they actually jumped down. Down, wash him out, but that's going to be sniper rifle on respawn. Yeah, but uh, EG got what they wanted there. They got they got use of all those power weapons. They yep. did a great job with sword and sniper. They got a 20-second lead, and right now they're just worrying about keeping them out of the hill because these last couple of hills, as we know, are very tough to hold. That top turn hill, we have not seen either team get more than a few seconds at a time out of. Not at all. Let's move across to uh, who's got the sword at the moment. Let's go give someone some sword time. I believe that's going to be APG right now, the man who has been on fire this entire tournament so far, getting some big, big triple kills, a lot of uh, killing sprees. Sword right now, though, 118 to 93, hitting the 2 minute 20 mark. They really need to make this work. He's got a good chance to get a triple kill. There is one guy, there's the this double, is there is another one on a really good situation yeah. for Noble Black to be able to hold both of these because the best situation that Noble Black or that uh, Noble Black's going to be able to do out of this is get control of Sniper and BR Tower. If they're able to get control of both, they can actually get top center hill. Yeah. You can hold there because you're not going to get any angles. Someone has to lift up from top blue. You can use the pillars to dodge grenades. It's just going to be a very good situation for Noble Black. But, however, it looks like EG was able to push over to BR Tower and get some control of the map. So this does not look very good for Noble Black now. One minute 45 then left on the clock of playtime. Big melee from APG. He does go down. That's going to be the sword transitioning into the hands of Evil Geniuses. That's going to be Snipe down. Sorry, I do apologize. It's going to be Lunchbox making good use of it with a double kill. Sword and Sniper in hand again. An amazing and incredible combo. But yeah, I don't know where they got time. this time from. I mean, no. they're only down by six seconds. Lunchbox once again giving up the, uh, you know, trained weapon over to one of his brothers. But same time, uh, I don't know where Noble Black was able to scrap up that time no. because as I was talking about, I was like, hey, it's so tough to get hill, you know, hill time here in top A, but Noble Black was able to do it. They were able to scrap up some time in the bottom center hill and then rotate over the top center hill. But again, that's going to be now sword transitioned into the hands of a Noble Black player. But I do believe Sniper Rifle, and yes, it is, is in the hands of Snipe down right now. He's made his way over to BR3, just managing just to stay alive. He's going to poke out a one shot, gets the body shot, yep. though, looking for the it's assist crucial. right now. Doesn't actually get it. Interestingly, he's managed to get away. Finds one player. Boom! There's one who actually wants to cross him. I don't think that was the initial player who was in. No, he was not. <laughs> that but, was uh, an actual look, kind of a lucky <laughs> shot. The guy running into the face of his bullet took that one. But then again, Sniper's gone down. That's going to be Noble out, Black now taking Noble control. Noble Black has VR tower, and they have Maniac over here at Sniper yeah, Tower. Maniac totally. is so important over here because they need Sniper Tower to shoot them out of top VR. We're going to see if Maniac can do this perfect flank and win the game for his team. This is all on him right now. His teammate does manage to take it. However, they are in the lead. But 20 seconds left on the clock. They've hit the 127 mark. They have taken the lead. I think that this is going to be Noble Black taking game number three and staying in winner's bracket at the moment. This will be taking it to a game number four, Walsh. That's exactly what they needed. Uh, everyone stepping up, especially Maniac. I was impressed. He was uh, yeah. 
shows a lot of veteran, you know, experience from all these tournaments. He said, you know what? I'm not going to panic and charge over towards that hill. I need to go over it and get Snipe Tower. We need to control this. That way we spawn them at bottom blue. And that's what won them the match. They got EG spawning bottom blue towards the end of the, end of the game. They were able to scrap up time in all three of those last hills. So interestingly, that is only the second game that EG have dropped in three events. Now for Noble Black, doing that for them, that's going to give them a serious, serious boost of confidence. Moving into this game number four, again, all they need Take a to look do at these is stats. move it across. Yeah, let's bring them up on screen right now as we look there. As you mentioned before, Maniac putting a big 29 on the board, yeah. 23 from APG. That the BTH power. duo, that BTH yeah, duo man. getting the kills they needed to, and uh, everyone doing their job. Like, Ares, great yeah. objective player, and doing exactly what he needed to. Got the time when he had to. We saw a lot of times he was scrapping up time in the bottom D hill, even in top B hill, and uh, he was just an integral part of that one. But look at the assist though for uh, Arcanum, 16, 16, and 16. 16's across the board for him, that's what you <laughs> kind of want to be pushing on. But moving into game number four then, you've took a game off EG. You've proved that they are human, that they can be beaten. I mean, you can make God bleed, you can, you can prove to the people that these guys can be beaten. That's going to be a little bit of a hindrance for EG. They're going to be like, oh, hang on a minute, this is game one. This is Seed Eighth, and we've lost the game. You know, yeah. that, that's only the second game in three. You look at them. They are not talking right now. They're not pumped up. You saw Snipedown shaking his head. At this point, they're, they're probably talking a little bit about mistakes last game, but they have to just kind of joke and just move on to the next one. You say, hey, guess what? We're playing against eight of the best teams in the world here. Yeah. It's, we're allowed to lose a game every once in a while, especially a close one. Need to bounce back from that. They cannot dwell on it. Coach Tao, he probably sent out a tweet saying, guess what, Series 2-1, sorry to all the EG fans, we'll try to bring it back. Yep. But uh, we just have to see them bounce back. And You called it, though, the BTH duo, Maniac and APG going in yep. right now, doing some serious work. They got in some very, very good positions there. Again, you mentioned it, how he took control of the S2, S3 section with that sniper rifle and just managed to lock down Snipe Tower as a whole with that sword, picking people off. And then they just got in that hill and just racked up the time at the end, which... Again. It was the full setup. Like, yeah. I pretty much counted Noble Black out towards the end of there because I saw that they had, what, is about a 30 second lead. And we're talking the top center and the top B hill just coming up towards the end. Those last couple minutes, that is so tough to get time in those hills unless you get some sort of full setup. And that's exactly what uh, Noble Black did. They got the kills over at Snipe Tower, they got them over at BR Tower, and spawned EG in bottom blue. Now let's take a look at Maniac during this last game. This is part of his spree. He gets a sword kill at Snipe 2. Gets the snipe kill at BR3 eventually, and then I believe he turns around for the triple. So, yep. indeed, this is what he wanted just to turn this around. This is the triple that I'm talking about. Boom. There we go. Slices the guy <laughs> straight in half, but again, he's not finished there looking around with the sniper rifle, looking to pick people off ref right and center. Didn't actually manage to get it at the end, but however, you mentioned how it was so vitally and crucially important to hold down those towers, which he managed to do with great succession. His plays there, you mentioned it before got Noble Black that win. Those kills are so valuable, especially when teammates have BR Tower. Like, I keep I keep reiterating this, but it's so important. When you are able to spawn a team at bottom blue, and the hill is somewhere besides bottom center or top blue, yep. you're able to scrap up time in any of those other three hills and pretty much keep control of the map. And that's all dude maniac. Like I said, I, I miss <laughs> I misremembered the play, like saying he got the snipe top center, or top BR, and then got the sword for the triple, but at the same time, all great plays all around. So. Game number four, then I didn't think we'll be seeing this if I'm honest. And that's, no, I'm uh, not counting out Noble <laughs> Black. I do apologize, but I genuinely didn't think we'd be seeing a game number four here, Walsh. But I can uh, speak for both of us and the fans out there that we're all happy to see a game number yeah, four because at this question. tournament, we want to see as many close series as possible. Okay, so moving in to game number four, as you can see on screen there, I shouldn't have counted it out because here we are, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be Shrine CTF. If we need to, if this does go in the favor of Noble Black, we will be moving into game number five, which is going to be Warlord Slayer. So, Walshy, Shrine CTF. Again, we're going to see that APG. In fact, we mentioned before, APG was on fire with the sniper, but to be fair, Maniac that last it was game. Maniac. Maniac that, that last game. So I would actually uh, expect to see Maniac grab the sniper at the start of the Shrine CTF game this time. You have to go by who's hot at the moment, and then I believe they also go with... Uh, with Maniac at the start with Sniper generally. So I believe they just switched it up for that Team Slayer just because APG is on fire. So I'd expect to see Maniac with Sniper at the start. So we're gonna start with him, and I will probably look like an idiot when he doesn't grab Sniper, <laughs> but we'll find out and see exactly what happens. Even but. if we don't, we'll stay, we'll stay on board with him. Maniac has literally been on fire this entire <laughs> tournament so far. You know, 
If this is how you start an event, Walsh, then wow. What, yep. uh, what else are we going to be seeing when we get into some of the later games? So far, the games have been absolutely fantastic. On screen then, ladies and gentlemen, right now you see this E, a G team. They will want to finish this one off with a win against Noble Black. That will put them 3-1 up and finish this round one off. So on board with Maniac, he is proving you wrong, Walsh, he as is. you They're mentioned. giving it back to APG again, but we're going to start with CM. Start with uh, Maniac and see what he can do to get these rockets. I believe. Was that a rocket guy who actually just killed himself there? I'm, I'm not entirely uh, sure, but he did get taken down whichever way that happened with the he rockets. Just grabbed it. I believe his Arcanum now has it. Yeah, let's move across to Arcanum. He's got them rockets in his back pocket. He needs to get them out. I do believe he needs to reload them though. Jump shot. Yes, he does, unfortunately, but he's getting chased by a player. <laughs> not sure where that player's gone, however. He yeah, does finish was, him off. That he must have weird. thought he had won the chamber because there's no way that he would have just jumped in there and said, hey, I'm going to reload rockets once I get inside there. So transition to his teammate, APG, wow. right? now did actually get the body shot on the guy from ring three interestingly that he's pushed into ring two with the sniper rifle. i was hoping we're going to kind of sit back a little bit which he is doing as he moves back to his own hook there looking down p street does just catch a guy rockets are in play though misses the first bullet i believe that was snapped down he's just caught someone's foot up on ring three body shot to the rocket guy the rocket guy does take down one player i believe that's going to be four rockets i've seen flying around now while she just get a body shot though from, I think, are moving across. That's going to be Roy. Let's move across to Roy Walsh. He's found himself up on ring three, putting bullets down with the sniper rifle. Down goes Arcanum in ring two with sniper. It's a dangerous place to be as grenades come in. Whips out the one, looks down the piece three. Puts a bullet in someone's face. Turns around, gets a body shot. Does come. Somebody challenges him, but he does get an elbow to the face in the end. That was quite the lunch. And Roy, I like that play where he sat passive for off the start with the sniper. But once his team started to get control of ring, started pushing the enemy side, he pushes up towards ring with the sniper. He eventually was taken down on the street, but that could have spelled disaster for Noble Black. Because as we know, once you start pushing their street, pushing their hut, and getting them spawning rocks, those are the easy sniper headshots that you can pick off. Indeed. Let's move back to APG right now. He's picked up the sniper rifle once again. He's only got a couple of bullets left. Unfortunately, Curse of the Caster as we move across. He <laughs> does get shot across map. He may get shut down if he's not careful. No grenades, though. He's lived again to fight another gear. Finds Roy. There's one looking down. Petrie sees nobody. Nobody in ring two at the moment as two guys are going to be jumping up onto ring three. That is a fantastic play by Team Noble Black. That's what they want. They want three, get two or three guys up on ring three. Take control. Totally locked down ring all together. They lock down that entire base. They're going to stop EG pushing forward. They can catch them on the spawns, slay them, and then all being well, run a flag. Yeah, and I like that play. He realized he only had two bullets left. No need to be, uh, you know, no need to be frugal with them. Get, no. get those out and set that sniper on spawn. Get your sniper back as soon as possible. He now knows that his sniper is going to be back at 2540. So you're going to be able to set up with that and use more defense. So this is unlike Team Slayer. You want to get as many, as many of your snipers as possible. So sometimes you don't want to just sit back and just try to use it as efficiently as possible. A lot of times you want as many snipers as you can possibly get. Interestingly, Roy was, I think it was Roy actually in their base. There had been a bit of a sneaky beaver moving his way around, but he did as he walked across open. He actually managed to get clipped in the back and put down. That would have been an interesting one because all four players were actually on the opposite side apart from one up on ring three now. I'm a big fan of ring three watch. I think if you can get someone <laughs> sitting there up at all times, you pretty much can lock that down. Golden Boys have got a bad habit. He's always mentioning it all the time. The 50-yard line. You control that middle, the 50% of the map mark, then you're going to push them down. You're going to lock down the spawns. You're going to see where they are. And more importantly, you're going to take ring control. And that is what this map all comes down to. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I am a huge fan of Ring 3. I think it's hard to find people that other fans are. You never hear something like, dude, I love Ring 1. Ring 1 is my favorite spot on the map. I love sitting there. Like, everyone knows Ring 3 is a spot to be. You can lay down cover fire, put down shots anywhere across the map, and as soon as you start to get weak, you can drop down to your bond or even Ring 2 if you still have control of it. Totally. As we move across, I'm having a look at Snipedown's point of view now, Walsh. I believe Rockets are in his back pocket. I don't know how many he's got. Oh, they're actually two left now. So that was four Rockets, picks up one, yep. reloads the Rockets. He's going to have two. That's going to be two guaranteed kills for him if he does land them. Flag is finally on the move, though. It's a little bit of a stalemate as we hit the four-minute mark, Walsh. Nobody really doing anything at the moment with the flags. However, I spoke too soon. Here we go. They are on the offensive push right now. EG moving that flag through the Rocks, coming into their own base right now. Oh, sorry, into their own side right now at the moment. He's got rockets. He needs to just wait here right now. Yeah, and hopefully nobody comes through. Catches one. There's Akinem. Down he goes. Moving across now. Looking. Puts a, puts a rocket straight into the hut. Doesn't hit anyone. However, he did get time on the flag. I like that play. He used it's both his rockets carry. before he died. He realized, hey, you know what? If I am going to die here or get a flag touch, 
I need to use both these rockets because worst thing I could do is lose these rockets and set up Noble Black for a counter cap. However, he walks through the waterfall only to be met by the blunt end of a shotgun. Down he goes, down Roy goes, unfortunately. Looking at now, I believe that's going to be a flag reset. Yes, it is. EG had a good time to actually manipulate this one and take it to 1-0, but unfortunately, had not entirely sure who that was with the shotgun, but great defense right now as we look across to Arcanum, looking straight down P Street. That's going to be Maniac bobbing up. It doesn't actually get the kill, though, Maniac defending his teammate, though, up onto Ring 3. Didn't get the shots off. Arcanum, this could be his time to actually switch this game around, Walshie. Yeah, this is the 25-40 sniper that we were talking about, and I like that play by Arcanum. He realized, hey, we don't have ring control anymore. A couple of us died. I need to push back to our hut, because if I die and give this to evil geniuses, that could be a cap, and that could put us behind. He realizes that they cannot give any ground. He knows that while he has a sniper on his side or in his hut, EG can't do anything about it. But he does need to be aggressive when his team pushes up. So I think he's doing it a little preemptively. I do not see any members. I don't see any uh, service tags in front of him. So I don't know what he's doing pushing up the ring yet, but he must feel a lot of confidence doing that because that is a very risky play. Yeah, it looks a bit like something out of the Matrix, which is a bullet whiz past the race. <laughs> that came straight down from their PC moving down. Don't exactly know where it came from. We've still not seen the opposing sniper. Let's look across Walsh. Who's in the sniper play for the opposing team as Arcanum does go down? I don't believe it's actually in play anymore, so it must have been used. However, as we, in fact, I'm telling lies, there it is in the hands of Roy right now. Few bullets in the chamber. Can he make these count? Every single bullet is going to be counts as the time is ticking down, and it's still currently nil-nil. So for those newer players out there, they're unsure, like, hey, I have a sniper, and I want to make sure I'm helping my team. How do I do that? Best way to be doing that is sitting on your side until you have ring or the other side control. If you push up before that, you may think you're being aggressive and help your team, but in fact, you're actually hurting them. You do not have any good sniping angles. So you notice, like, Roy right now, he's staying back because he realized these are the best angles that he can get on ring three, shooting at streets. And once his teammates actually have ring, and once they start to push the enemy base, I guarantee Roy will push up over to Carbine or up to ring three so he can get a different sniping angle. So that's the time you have to push in. So even though his teammates have ring right now, he is just waiting. He realizes, yep. you know what? No point to push into a ring with snipe yet because it's not the best angle. We need to have them push back all the way on their side, back in their hut back in the rocks, and then I can push up with the sniper. Turns around, does catch one guy who's actually taken down his Ring 3 teammate. However, a bullet did just whiz down from above. I believe that was Ring 3 actually came from. Scoping down, trades it out for a shotgun on his BR. He's now got a close and extremely long range weapon. Two grenades go down. Bit of a YOLO shotgun there. Probably not really going to get anybody. However, yeah, he's putting so pressure with the grenades, looking across. I don't like this combo at all right now. Um, no, it's an interesting one. He only has three bolts with that sniper, and you're talking about Roy, someone with one of the best BRs in the game. Um, it's just such a risky play. And all four of EG are down. I mean, that's not 100% to blame from Roy switching out a BR for a shotgun. But at the same time, you got to question that choice of weapons. Yeah, but as you can see on screen there, we've got APG putting shots in into the rocks. There's a sub kill. There is a third guy up in there waiting around. But they do have rockets hovering around on their side. That's going to be Ares, his teammate. He's getting very aggressive and pushing into the base with the rocks. Can they get the slaughter? The flag is now on the move. This is where the slaughter time needs to come as evil geniuses go three down. This could be a flag if Ares just keeps them in this spawn. There's one looking for a double. Doesn't get it. Can he land it? He gets the assist that his teammate cleans up. But that flag is on the move, Walshie. They need to defend that and stop it going any further. Now Arcanum, this is a semi-desperate play, but he realized once he gets around that corner, he can bring it back towards his side. Now this is a great play. At first I was going to say he was desperate in it because it's in the rocks and he can't give up those deaths, but the way you uh, way you go about flag caps is that once you get towards your side, you need to take it slow and get those slays. However, once when you have on the enemy side or the enemy's 50 yard line, oh my. Wow, APG didn't God. manage to get that. This could be extremely dangerous. The flag, they can smell it. Can he grab it? Yes, he can. Maniac grabs the flag. That's going to be 1 0 to Noble Black. This game just got fun, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. The pressure now on to Evil Geniuses. Can Noble Black take this to a game five bullshit? Absolutely. After seeing that, we just saw how Noble Black. They rallied the flag back to their side. And even then, they desperated it. They uh, they got it back there and just, like you saw, Maniac desperate it, got it in, and that's what they needed. They got the kills on their side, and at this point, they seem to hold them off. Now, what I hope Noble Black does not do is just stay on their side and defend, because that's exactly what evil geniuses would like. They would love ring control. Give them ring, and you are going to probably give them a cap. Actually, I like that. He actually backed up and waited for his teammate to grab the sniper rifle. I believe that's going to be APG. 
but at the moment on board with Snipedown, he's looking, he knows, but we actually saw there looking off of the screen of when we were on with board with Maniac, we actually saw two or three people go down, so that's going to be three down at the moment, there was three Evil Geniuses coming back on the defensive, however, moving across to APG, look at what's in his hand, this could be the game changer, we are about to hit the five minute mark, they are one nil up on flags, all they need to do is slay. And this is the situation I was talking about. Once your teammates are pushed over on the enemy side, you can push into ring with Sniper. You know that they're going to be spawning back rocks. You know that you can get different angles. And that's exactly what APG did. He unfortunately did not get to take advantage of spawn killing those in rocks, but now he's in the perfect position too. You can bet that Noble Black is going to leave rocks open for APG to get some easy snipe kills. Here we go then on the spawn. He knows exactly where they are, but he is getting shit, uh, shots from behind him at the moment that we're going to be from the hook right now there we go he's going to back off those caps the guy up on the carbine will he finish it off yes no he doesn't but his teammate does come in with the big assist that's exactly what we wanted looking up but he does go down with the sniper rifle however so that's going to transition into the hands of a evil genius's player i do believe however roy jumping down he must know rockets are up soon yeah. otherwise he would not have been in that situation no, you know what all. i mean yeah. Like, there's no reason that Roy would have just jumped down, ring one, ran the rocket spot. So he must be here to call from Tawi, or one of his teammates maybe uh, have gotten the rockets. Perfect and straight there off it spawn. Is. There it is. Coach Tawi at his finest. And again, we've mentioned it before how it's so crucially important on this map. You do not know as an enemy team, if you don't have rockets, you don't know when they're up. If the enemy no. team drops them, you've got no idea when they drop them, when they're going to be up. You're going to be keep looking. But right now, it's in their favor. Once he drops these rockets, Tawi's going to be all over. He's going to be right. Okay, what's You want to know what's amazing about this? Go is on. EG didn't even have control of these last rockets. This is when Ares died with rockets yes, on the flag exactly. And Coach Tawi realized that, saw, hey, Ares died with rockets. They're not there. This is when rockets are going to come up. I got the time, boys. So he ha he will lose the rockets. I believe there was one in the chamber at the time when he dropped them. So that's going to be a Nova Black player picking them up, and they won't know exactly when they go down. That's APG off screen who does have them. However, we currently are on board with Snipe down right this now. This perfect sniper motion again. Yep. I keep like, oh. keep bringing it up, saying, "Hey, look at when you have the enemy on the far side of the map, you can push into rank." However, Snipe down wow. does a perfect rotation. He goes back to his snipe hut, and look at that because of that. Gets oh my two, God! Three, three easy row. kills. Three kills. Straight I guess off I should say bullets. easy. Three perfect kills for Snipe down. He hit every single. Single one incredible. took them down. That's three players down for the opposing team. But Andy hit the rocket guy, stopping them with the transition of the rockets to the other hand. However, Arcanum has just used the last rockets and he has to go down. So they're going to be on respawn right now. Still, Sniper Rifle in the hands of Snipe down, just doing work. But he needs his team to grab this flag. That's a big double kill for him right now. Pushing up on the carbine, looking in. Can he find anybody else right now? This, his sniper is just disgusting right now. He's yeah. so on fire. But kill after kill he gets is being answered by Noble Black. They keep killing his teammates. All his teammates there are close to the flag. Now we finally have someone up there. I believe it's Roy. Finally yep. close enough to get the, cat, the grab. But if they kill Roy right here, they're not going to be able to transition this into a cap. So no. Snipe Down needs to uh, actually back off. You know, since they have flag in the rocks. Snipe down is staying a bit further away from Hut. He wants to make sure they spawn there. He is staying up high and let his teammate run it back. And now that, that they've spawned, push into Hut and get the perfect flank. Oh, perfect play from Snipe down, giving him the, the one, two, walking around. No idea where he was. Snipe down there actually making that cap possible. One, one now, the score as we go into the three minute remaining, Matt Walsh. Here. This is getting to be one intense game. Noble Black have put pressure on this, this evil genius's roster. They know they can do big. Double kill from right now, but he gets the back whack. He goes down. Little battles going on in the hut right now. Jumping on board with Ares. He's half shield. Needs to stay alive as Grenade come in. He's one shot. He just needs to stay alive. There is a shotgun creeping out there. Needs to be careful of the grenades. He's in a perfect play position to make something happen. He's on. Oh, but the grenade, grenade comes in. And yeah. those grenades are just like landmines. They land below you, and you just drop instantly. Now, uh, Ares did a great job going over the enemy hut because you need to get control hut, especially when you don't have any sort of sniper. It's all about getting the enemy to spawn in rocks. You get them to spawn in rocks, they're yep. in a very vulnerable position, and you just have all the options in the world. Like, you can push back to ring, help your teammates. You can push over to flag once you get the kills, and it's just so crucial to get that hut control. Indeed, completely right, but now we're hitting the one minute mark. I can see this game going into overtime, Walsh. Oh, the score sure. currently is 1-1. One, one. Not entirely sure when those rockets were. I believe it was Arcanum who actually had them last. I, I think it might have been Roy at the very end that had them, or it could have been Arcanum. I can't remember which one, so I did lose track of those. But I want to say um, we'll definitely be seeing at least one more set of rockets this game. With the way it's been going, each team has needed some sort of power weapon or some sort of streak of kills in order to turn into a cap. So the very, on, uh, I believe it was on the 
Noble Blackside, they use Maniac Sniper and end up getting those kills to get that first cap. Noble we Black saw it. Snipe Down get those set of kills and end up having Roy running the flag. So these uh, these teams are relying on a power weapon in order to, you know, outplay the other squad. And just as you said that, the Sniper has just popped up and Snipe Down's grabbed it. Mr. Eric Verona needs to make something serious happen. We're going into the final 15 seconds of this game. We are going to transition into the 15 minutes of overtime. He needs to land these kills left, right and center. There's one. Gets the assist. That's going to be two down. Looking at the guy on spawn. There is another person in rocks. He needs to get these off. They're in the perfect prime position to run this flag. However, the Hail Mary straight across map. Fantastic. It's not just a sniper rifle. He can get you long range. Yeah. The grenades are as well. So we are currently now in to overtime. The next flag will win, as you see in the bottom right hand corner. Doesn't get that headshot now. Everything, the pressure is on. This is time where Noble Black, if they get the flag, it will go to game number five. However, if evil geniuses get this next flag, they will knock Noble Black into the loser bracket, but a killing spree. Big double kill now for Snipedown. He's in a perfect position, looking for the spawners. Zoomed in, one goes down above him. His teammate hiding out in the hut right now. Catches the spawners, puts them on, but the pressure's there. I think this is gonna be an extra flag cap now as we move on board with Roy. He's running it in, down comes the water. Ball. In goes the flag, and that's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Evil Geniuses will take this game and wrap it up three to one. Noble Black will drop down into the losers bracket. Noble Black putting a lot of pressure on that last game, going up 1-0 with only six minutes left. But Evil Genius is answering. They got a cap in those first three minutes to relieve that pressure, and then in a little bit of overtime, about a minute into overtime, they will seal seal the series. So good sport sportsmanship all the way around. Shaking hands, these guys have played against each other multiple times, I'm sure online and scrims, at past tournaments, and I'm sure they'll see each other again. Credit where credit's due. Noble Black just put out the fight of their life, moving into the kill feeds right now, but look at that on the EG side. 29, 24, 25, and 20, 18 assists from Snipe down with that sniper rifle. But then again, you look across, you know, it's, to the Noble Black roster, it's pretty know, not, even. Not out slain by too hard. No. I mean, only an eight kill difference between these two squads in about a 16 minute game. That's not out slain on either end really too hard. So, fantastic games all around then. Incredible, incredible players from both sides at point of views. You know, I have to say it, that is a big, big, fair enough they've lose and gone down into the losers bracket, but the pressure and the games that they give EG to make it there were, were fantastic. I wouldn't be, fair enough, they're in losers, but I certainly by any means would not be disappointed by the player. No, absolutely not. Um, it's always very telling. You see some of these early rounds, how teams match up against each other. So you're looking at one seed versus eight seed. They dropped a game. They had a very close one. They had to go yep. into overtime to win the flag game. And I believe their Slayer, they only won by about nine kills. So it's not like a dominating performance. I mean, they beat CLG by worse scores than that. When we're talking in the finals of a tournament, they 3-0'd them. So this is very telling that, you know, squads came out here to play. No Black came out to play. They deserve their spot in this top eight. And we're going to have to see what EG can do in these following rounds. Without question, but they just did not shut down Snipe down many, many a time. You saw him just on them carbines, putting in the assist. You saw how many assists he had on the screen, putting in the kills and just being a complete nuisance. And this is the kind of map where you pick up the sniper rifle and you can just be a complete <laughs> pain in the backside. Even if you just sat, if you don't get the kills or the assists, if you just sit on those carbine platforms on the side, you can just keep them, keep the pressure applied, keep them in their side of the base, let your teammates do the slaying, run the flags through, and that's what it is. You saw him, he picked up Sniper Rifle at the end, and it was a complete and utter game changer. So it was a great performance by Snipe Down, but actually, on the floor, we have Mr. Lethal, who went plus eight on that Team Slayer game. I want to hear what he has to say about that last series. Thank you, gentlemen. Lethal, new addition to Evil Geniuses. Great performance so far. Tell me about the journey, though, of joining this team. Well, I mean, I was teaming with Believe the Hype, and we won the Invitational with, um, actually, people we just played, ABG and Maniac. And um, we kind of disappointed at Iron Gaming, and then Pistola got injured, and, and they asked me, and I, uh, I would have been stupid to say no, so I said yes instantly. I'm sure they're all very grateful for saying yes, especially with your performance today. We saw a little bit of a rocky mid-tier type of play happening uh, over on lockdown how did you guys deal with that i mean we lost one game we lost one map last tournament and it was actually lockout king to denial so i don't know what it is about that if we just decide to lose that but at least we got it out of the way early but um i don't know i mean me and snipe both had off games and we kind of choked uh vr control at the end two times um props to noble for breaking it though 
I know we'll definitely make you guys work for it, but it is a first victory at the beginning of the double elimination bracket. Now, there's two things you'll learn when you're on Evil Geniuses, how people can fall in love with you as a player. One, wear your team jersey, and two, throw out t-shirts. So we're going to do that during the break. Our next game, our next match is going to be Optic Gaming versus Cloud9. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned.